Hello and welcome to episode 18 of Buxton Barrowman, where I go through Buxton's history and clean up the town at the same time. Today's episode is a brief explanation about these three important yet dull bits of, well, I suppose you can call it infrastructure. Starting off with this white pillar, known as a trig point or triangulation pillar, these pillars have been scattered all over the country by Ordnance Survey, so of course Buxton has a few. Four in fact, very close to town. These pillars have been set up in order to determine the exact shape of our country. Often sitting on high spots, they're used by setting up atop the pillar a theodolite. It's like a telescope protractor thing. But they set it up on top, in line with the other pillars nearby. And from this, you can convert each section in the country into triangles. And then you can work out, with accuracy, the angles between them. This is Axe Edge's trade point, by the way. I'm now going to move on to Burbage Moor. The system of trig points makes up what the Ordnance Survey call the National Grid, not the electricity one. And this project involved building roughly 6,500 of these pillars between 1936 and 1962. Moving on to the next trig point, it's nearby up at the top of Colber Cross, but I have already recorded up there in the past, so for this walk I decided to carry on going from Burbage Moor straight to Green Fairfield. Unfortunately not as bright as the others and on a much smaller hill but the Green Fairfield's trick point is still well preserved. Now if you've ever been to a trick point you might have noticed this little plate at the bottom and this thing is called a flush bracket. There is a range of these that vary slightly from when they were built but overall they were set up across Britain primarily from 1912 to the 1960s and are used to attach measuring equipment. They essentially hook their measuring equipment to the holes at the top of the bracket. And the measuring equipment particularly used for this is called a geodetic levelling staff. And the numbers and letters down below are just a unique identifier, which can also be used to know when it was put in place. Not all trick points have them, but it's not just for those pillars. They're also installed on the side of buildings and structures flush the wall, hence the name. But this also includes our big old viaduct above Sylvan Park in the centre of Buxton. We have one right at the bottom. Now the final thing to talk about are these marks. Found a few of them on the way to and fro the trig points and these are called benchmarks. Just like trig points are today, these were once labelled on maps. They had a simple BM and then a number which is the height of the mark above sea level. And that is what these marks were used for. And when I mean sea level, I mean sort of the average sea level that comes from Newlyn in Cornwall. But these used a very simple measuring technique of finding the height above sea level for one mark, then looking out to the next one and working out the difference between them. And there are a lot of these marks. Believe me, they are everywhere. Over half a million of them were created, mainly in urban areas. And the first ever benchmarks were made back in the early part of the 19th century. The last was carved into a milestone just over 31 years ago in 1993. And I can say it was quite fun following old maps through Fairfield to find these marks. I would actually recommend doing it if you've got some free time and you want to go on like a little treasure hunt. I'll leave a link down below to the map software that I typically use. But of course, nowadays we don't use any of these beautifully weird pieces of infrastructure as we can all do it with GPS and digital equipment. So it's quite fortunate that a lot of these marks, trig points and brackets still survive today. Now it's a Buxton Barrowman video, so I did clean up only one wheelbarrow this week but I was in a little bit of a rush. I did it the exact same day I was doing all this filming. And I did a small circuit around Heath Park and St. Mary's Church, which was oddly filled with quite a lot of rubbish. I filled the wheelbarrow very quickly this week. Now, before I end this video, past me decided that I wanted to tell you guys a little story. Now, I think I've been to Axe Edge Point before. Uh, during college, 
I used to do uh, outdoor sport pursuits in college and we were told to come up here in a blizzard. I couldn't even see my nose, it was that thick. Snow was really deep as well. And we were told to essentially do some compass navigations up here and lead each other in groups like we would do if we were to have an outdoor pursuit job, which is what the college course was for. I, I don't remember who was in charge. I don't even know if it was myself. But because of the thick blizzard, someone read the compass wrong. And instead of heading to where we were supposed to head from the trick point, we they did a complete circle and ended right back where we started. And now I'm walking it in the daylight for the first time. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> because it's very obvious, slopes downwards, road, road on either side, but hey-ho. That was also the day that, in the blizzard, I didn't see the bog because it was covered in snow. Put my foot down, got stuck in the bog, more than knee high, and I tried to lift my, uh, my feet up, and well, my foot came up, but the shoe didn't, and I had to go rescue it. And I'm pretty sure it's the shoes I'm wearing now, actually. So they're still surviving. Anyway, well that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, ta-ra! Woohoo!